Hi, this is Paul over at paulorente.com and the Lufa Ranch. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out our channel today. On this episode, we're going to talk about the green pepper. What in the heck do you do when you get stuck with a bunch of green peppers? Either your neighbors dropped off a whole bunch extra that they've got from the garden or maybe you grew too much and, you know, uh, what do you do with them? Well, we like to do stuffed peppers. Sometimes we'll stuff them with ground beef with uh, rice. Sometimes we have lamb and rice we'll stuff it with and a nice tomato sauce. Well there's a lot of different recipes on that. This is another one that's actually inspired by my father who's a chef and uh, you've probably seen him before uh, if you've checked out our channel and you see the 85 year old grandpa that still rips the speed bag. That's my dad and uh, so on this episode stand by we're going to show you a really cool way that you can enjoy green bell peppers. Okay, so we have a uh, green bell pepper. One of the ways that I like to cut this makes it a little bit simple. You can simply uh, just hold the pepper. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cut from this part here, kind of like carefully in this little kind of shape like this, just a little arching cut. So what we're going to do is, see the seeds are going to be in this area, almost like a triangle right here. So if we just carve very carefully along this kind of area right here down to the bottom, we'll be able to stay out of the, uh, the seeds that are in the core here. So I'm just going to do a couple of cuts here just to show you kind of how like we like to do it. And that was a little too shallow. So we're going to go again here and again here and again. And one more cut. So something like that. All right. So there's a section that's going to be inside here. This little white part, we like to take that out. And you can just take, this is a boning knife. I like to use Wolstoff. So um, that's a, a boning knife. This is a 10-inch uh, chef's knife by, um, by Wolstoff. Actually, that might be a 12. <laughs> Come to think of it. No, that's a 10-inch. So uh, anyhow, so this little part right here, we're just going to shave this little white part off here and get rid of that. We'll look here, see we've got a little bit here, and we'll just kind of shave that. And everything else looks pretty good. All right, so let's do the next one. You can even use this boning knife. So try this, a little slice, and a little slice. See how easy it is? You just kind of do, oh, it's kind of like a little half moon, maybe, little kind of motion here. And you'll start to see, you see how the seeds are set up there? So kind of from the side here, once you have it, your initial cut, then you'll see where you need to go. And hey, if you end up messing up a few, no big deal, you know? It's fun to cook, and this is really nutritious. And uh, so, all right, just another little slice off there and uh, let's see got another little slice here we can do take that off and uh, alright we'll put a couple there so you got the idea I'm not going to go through all of those we're going to do four peppers and so the next thing we're going to do after that is uh, we are going to carefully just kind of slice a few more here And we're just kind of, oh, a little bit of a julienne. My dad spent a lot of time showing me how to cook when we were kids. So it was a very normal thing for us to be in the kitchen. I have a few brothers and we all got in the kitchen and uh, he taught us at a young age uh, how to cook. And, you know, we've carried that on teaching our kids. And I think it's a great thing to, to do and great way to serve others. Uh, so here we go. So we got those peppers there and I actually had one I already pre-cut there. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, an onion and the way I like to cut the onion is I'll cut the top off here, spin it, cut the bottom. Okay, then cut it in half. All right, once you cut it in half, 
you can peel it pretty easy here. All right. And we'll cut the take the skin off here. All right. And just simply on this one, so you saw the shape. I'm going to show you here because there's a lot of great tricks to cutting onions. And um, some people will take this core out. You know, you can take um, your knife and just cut in. Take that little core out if you want. All right, so that was the center there. And we cut it that way, right? Now, if you turn it on end, on the side rather, we're just going to do some large slices here. All right, and these are probably, I don't know, uh, half inch slices, something like that. And now onions on to the, to the dish here. We got that. All right. Next thing we have is a little bit of garlic. All right, if you take and smash the garlic, uh, we're probably just going to use about two, right? And this will just be kind of rustic, so knife on there, smash, knife on there, smash, right, and watch, I'm going to show you something that's kind of nifty. This is a little tool a friend of mine gave me. Helen, if you're watching this, thank you so much. If you've never seen this, this is a little rubber kind of tube that you can take, put your garlic in there, you roll it on your board. And look what happens. The peel all comes off. Isn't that incredible? So that's a kind of a cool tool. Uh, anyhow, you can do a little smash like this. Some people will take, put a little kosher salt on it. You can move your knife back and forth. Turn it into a paste. All right, so we have a little, little paste here. All right, the other thing we could do is just smash it. We could put it in there into the pan like this. And if you don't like big chunks of garlic, you can just saute it. And when it gets to the point that it's cooked, you got the flavor out of it, you can pull it back out. It's just a big chunk like that, right? All right, so that's another way of doing it. The next way would be, all right, you have your garlic, you you've done your smash. Now you can run your knife through it, right? And you can make it as fine as you want, just keep moving it back into the center and rock your blade. And now you've got uh, minced. And I could do it as fine, uh, you know, as uh, we'd like it. If you like it a little rustic, okay, that's fine too. So that's three different ways uh, there that you can do that. So, all right, next thing we're going to do is get our pan heated up and we'll get sauteing. Okay, so we have uh, the pan on the stove. Um, this is an electric stove. We're going to do, you can put it somewhere near six to seven. Listen, uh, depending on where you're looking at this uh, in the world, um, this is just going to be a little bit above uh, halfway. So half would be what, medium? Um, so just slightly above that. But um, you figure it out on your stove. You've got a lot more experience with what you're cooking on. But I'm just showing you, uh, for me, uh, uh, nice saute temperature somewhere in that area. Um, we're going to be using uh, Mazzone uh, extra virgin olive oil. This one um, has shows rosemary, but I've been refilling it uh, with their Mazzone's uh, extra virgin uh, olive oil. This is imported directly from Italy, and um, you can find that online at Mazzone. Um, olive oil or paniolio.com anyway we'll put a link in the bottom so you can go over there and check that out they do have these wonderful flavored ones with uh, rosemary with pepper uh, with basil with orange and lemon they're wonderful they're super healthy and they're extra virgin um, so we're gonna heat up the pan here and uh, first thing to do is we're gonna add just a little bit of the oil and that's probably just maybe about uh, I don't know a teaspoon something like that and then, next we're going to add the onions, and you can tell if you, the temperature is 
is right on the pan because you can hear the sizzle now. Can you hear that? All right. So here we go. We're going to saute these. Looks like we might need just a little bit more olive oil. Okay, so just quick drizzle. And we like to caramelize these a little bit. So, that's a pretty good size one. So what we're going to be doing is peppers, onions, a little bit of garlic, and we're going to saute these down and we're going to store them in a jar. There's going to be a little bit of salt and pepper on it. We're going to store it in a jar and we're going to use it for uh, sausage. If you want to have a, a beautiful sausage meal, you can top it with sausage. Uh, with this topping, it's kind of like a relish um, on some delicious um, rolls. You can use use this on hot dogs. You can bake, put it as a topping for chicken, for fish, you know, whatever you like. So in this portion wise, it's going to be a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Okay. And so you start to see they're going a little bit clear here. Okay, we'll break these up a little bit here. Actually, that one's not going to break up. I'm going to take that off. Because that has a top of it. Anyway. So it's starting to go a little bit clear. Now we're going to add our peppers. So what I did was I showed you I cut a couple of peppers, but I had one pre-cut. So this is one onion. That's a sweet onion. And three peppers. But honestly, you can do whatever portions that you like. And so, a um, little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt, and that's an incredible smell right there. There's something about uh, peppers and onions sautéing is just wonderful. So, when we're cooking dishes from Puerto Rico, um, we use some of the, this, is, uh, it's kind of a base in what we call the sofrito. So we'll use bell peppers, onions, garlic, some lime juice to substitute for a sour orange, tomatoes, cilantro. And you cook that down kind of like a salsa, and that's going to be the base sauce that you would use for doing rice dishes um, that has either chicken or pork, uh, ribs, like um, grandmother used to do. Um, these little, little baby back ribs. And, uh, and that's a wonderful dish. My Italian grandmother would, you know, cook something like this and it'd be very typical um, to have something like this and uh, over sausage. And uh, so you get the basic idea. You can modify the salt and pepper to how you like it, okay? And now you can kind of see, hey, get back here in the pan. Now you can see where we're going with this. It is smelling incredible. I didn't put my fan on in the house because you wouldn't be able to hear me talking. But uh, look at that beautiful color, right? Now is about the time. I'm going to add a little bit of the garlic to it. And remember the three different ways I showed you that you could cut it? Hey, you could do all of these ways, one of these ways. You could do none of these ways, but this is just one little idea so that's the chart garlic right and that's going to be the one that's the whole kind of smash and you smash it to get the oils out of it and that's going to get, get that great flavor um, i went a little bit easy actually on the salt this is kosher salt that i'm using so you can see it really well it will be easier to control this is going to be the taste all right so we got that going stir that around now this big one right here, if you don't like it, when you're done with this, you can pull it out. You don't have to eat that big piece. So this is just a great way to use up some of these peppers. And, you know, I'm thankful for my dad, who's an amazing chef. He's been cooking, uh, let's see, he's been, well, he's been hitting that speed bag you've seen on that, um, 
on that video, the 85-year-old grandpa that hits the speed bag. He's been hitting that for, let's see, he's 88 now. So he's been hitting that for 74 years, and he's been training uh, students, more than 10,000 students from all around the world on the speed bag, but he's also a master chef, and that's something that we hadn't shared with you before, and he has poured in for many years different recipes. We talk on the phone, we cook in the kitchen together, and uh, in the restaurant, at the house, and uh, so this is, this is for you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Father's Day is going to be uh, for us here in the United States. It's going to be on uh, Sunday. And today is, let's see, it's still Friday. So just in a few days, I talked to Dad yesterday, and he doesn't know that I'm doing this video, but Dad, this is going to be a tribute to you. We love you. And thanks so much for sharing everything that you, that you have your whole life with us so we can be uh, good men and productive people for society. But uh, cooking is just a great way to be able to give back. Uh, we've been able to, uh, you know, cook in restaurants, cook at special events, uh, catering um, for doctor's offices. Uh, we've done weddings and um, cook for the homeless um, at the shelters for holiday meals and throughout the year. So you start off learning in the kitchen. My dad gave me those skills to go into the restaurant, learn different things there, work in the front of the house as a waiter, work in the back of the house, uh, doing uh, prep cooking and then catering cooking. And, uh, you know, it, it led to being able to serve a lot more people than I ever thought uh, when he was teaching me in that kitchen as a kid. And probably, I bet if I talked to dad, that would be the same, he'd think kind of the same way. It, it's uh, something that, a skill that he gave us that grew to a point where, you know, we can really help an awful lot of people. So, uh, so learn how to cook and teach your kids, teach your friends and enjoy it because when we learn how to cook, it's a great way to share with others. And the other thing is I'm not giving you an exact recipe. I'm just kind of giving you a technique of how to put things together. You figure out the portions that work best for you. So we did three peppers. We did one onion. We did, um, three cloves of garlic, a couple of pinches of salt. If you don't like salt, hey, don't put it in there. If you don't like pepper, don't put it in there. You adjust it to what you like. All right, so let's see what we're looking at here. Now, it's starting to wilt a little bit more, and it's looking really good, it's looking really nice. So, I'm gonna throw a cover on this thing and let it cook for a couple more minutes here, and uh, then we'll be back and show you what it looks like then. Okay, so we've been uh, cooking uh, with the lid on for maybe about two minutes or so, and uh, just helping it wilt down a little bit with the with the steam. But if you take a look here at the pan. You start to get a little bit of caramelizing. The sugar start coming out of the uh, out of the onions, and you can kind of see here. There's a little bit of that sticking there. So what we're going to do is we're going to deglaze the pan, and that's a fancy word for saying we're going to take some chicken stock. You can use water, beef, stock, whatever liquid that you like. You could use wine if you like, but this is just a little bit of chicken stock. Okay, we're going to add that in. Now, can you hear? You see the steam coming up. So it's going to remove those sugars and those bits off the bottom. Look at that beautiful color, right? Can you see how it's, it's brought that deep, rich color right off the pan? And that is where you have incredible flavor. And that is what you're looking for when you're sauteing proteins like a steak or a chicken. Um, what else? On pork. And you get a nice crust like that. And you want to deglaze that pan afterwards. You can make a little pan gravy just by adding a little bit of stock to it. You want to make a, a, a little, you can add a little bit of wine if you want it. That's awesome. You can add a little bit of cream if you want it more creamier. Kind of to finish it off at the end. But this is what we're looking for. So, 
Still needs to cook down a little bit more. And uh, we're looking for the peppers to wilt a little bit more. You can see here uh, that there's still some that are not quite wilted. So we're just going to keep going. And you know, I did a little bit of a, a rough chop on it. They're not all the exact size. And I'm going to tell you that if you cut vegetables um, in a lot of different sizes, and it's the same thing if you were to cut chicken up in a lot of different sizes, you have a small one, you have a big one, you have a medium sized one, and you try and cook it, well the small ones obviously you're going to cook faster. And the bigger ones are going to take longer. And maybe the small ones are going to be overcooked before the big one, uh, while the big one is, when you finally get to the point where you're going to finish with the big one, everything else is, is overcooked. So if you um, cut things consistently, that's going to help you finish consistently. So I uh, just uh, like sometimes to cut cut it a little bit. For this dish, it's not real critical because you're just going to cook it for a long time and uh, so it doesn't really matter. We're not really going to have to worry about it drying out. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil and keep going. Raise the volume just a little bit. I said volume, but you know I meant the uh, the heat on the stove. Just a little bit, so um, this is looking really good. And I'm going to cover it up again. Just let it steam just a little bit more. Okay, so now we're going to uncover and we're going to look at it again and, and we're going to feel that the bottom is getting caramelized again and drying out a little bit and so um, I added a third of a cup of stock already and now I'm going to add another third like I say this could be uh, it could be water if you want but it's nice to add the stock it adds a little bit more flavor and um, hey be careful with the salt if you go and take um, and add a stock that is low sodium that's what we prefer you can monitor your salt a little bit better. Then you can control the salt um, uh, by yourself rather than getting a stock that's already salted up and now you're adding salt on top of salt. So uh, just a little bit of stock, low sodium, great. If you make your own, that's even better. But uh, it says sale, but in Italian we call it sale. And my uh, sweet cousins from Campobasso, Italy, the last, well, I say this is the first time that I went to Campobasso. They're very kind. It's a um, beautiful town up in the mountains in Italy. And Aldo, Vanessa, Rafael, ciao. Thank you so much. There was a beautiful potter that was, uh, was making these uh, pieces. And uh, so she hand painted every single piece. And I left Campobasso with a nice, uh, beautiful uh, souvenir. And I've been using it for years now. So, all right, we're back to the back to the peppers. So now I'm leaving the lid off. Okay, so when you leave the lid off, you're going to have evaporation, right? So you can see the steam coming off. So in a little bit here, we're going to get back down to it. The pan's going to get dry again. We can cover it up and capture some of this steam and keep steaming it or let's see what it looks like here just in a few moments and see if we got the peppers wilted down to the point where we like it and honestly you can pull this out at whatever point that you like but we're looking for a pretty good wilt on the peppers and and we have that nice caramelization from the onions so As we say in Italy, molto bene. Beautiful. Very good. Okay, so let's see where we're at now. Oh yeah. So that's looking exactly the way we want it. So one of the things when we're cooking, it seems obvious, but uh, some people might forget this. You got to taste it. So let's take a little bit here. And you know, let's let's get a little taste of it. 
and just see if we maybe it needs a little bit more salt maybe it needs a little more pepper um, hopefully you didn't put too much so you can just go easy with it because listen you can always add it but you can't take it away so uh, all right let's check it out this looks so good super hot oh my gosh that is incredible got to have one more bite it's amazing now what I need is some good Italian sausage or hamburger. Put that on top. Woo! Pretty tasty. All right. So we're going to move it over here. We're going to put it on a dish. My friend Helen, if you're watching, you probably recognize this dish because that was a gift that you gave me that uh, is from Italia. Thank you, Helen. So we're going to let this cool a little bit, all right? And uh, after this cools, then we're going to take a wide mouth jar. This is going to be a quart size. You can get whatever size you need for the volume that you're cooking. And uh, let me turn this fan off here real quick. This fan is annoying. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot about that. But uh, it was getting a little smoky in here. All right, so now um, wide mouth jar. We've got a, a wide mouth um, funnel. And we'll just load these in. Just like this. Move this over a little closer. These funnels are great if you like to can. They are fantastic because they just fit the jar perfect. And you can fill the jar without getting everything on the sides. Look at that. So that's almost filling up. Uh, oh, we're probably about, oh, maybe half. Th oh, about three quarters actually of the jar is filling up. And then this we're going to cool off on the countertop. And then we'll put a lid on it and I'll show you here. Alright, take this off. And if you have a little bit of something on the lid, it's no problem. You can just wipe it like that. No big deal. No problem. And then you put the lid on it. Now, we're going to let this cool without the lid, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like in the jar. And I guess if we gave it a little shake, you'd see how much it kind of settled here. But we'll let it cool with the lid off. Actually, you can let it cool um, in a dish, spread it out, it'll cool faster. And, and then jar it. This is a little bit hot right now. But uh, we'll lid that. Uh, after it's cooled off, put it in the fridge. And look. Well, this looks fantastic. The peppers and onions, we put them on uh, uh, some Italian sausage that we boiled in a little bit of beer, and we browned them up in a pan. And so, if you don't want the bread, you can just eat them just like that. If you like the bread, I like the bread. You can slice them. Slice your sausage there. And let's put a little bit on here of our peppers and our onions. Oh, that one got away. That's all right. Won't be for long. Now, if you like mustard, we've got a couple different types of mustard here. If you don't like it, hey, don't. Let's see. I might try. What the heck? This is a little bit of mustard with a little horseradish in it. Look at that. Give it a try here. All right. Big taste test. See if we can hold this thing together. Wow, that is amazing. The sausage has got a nice caramelization on it, a little bit hint of sweetness, and you can see the color right there. It just fell out there, but it's not going away too far, I can tell you that. Amazing. But with the peppers and onions, 
Gives a little bit of that sweetness there and the garlic. Fantastic. I hope you try this this recipe and you can keep that jar uh, in the fridge for when you like to uh, use it. We'll put a date on it and uh, we'll use it over um, the next few days, maybe the next week. And um, fantastic. Uh, you got to try this one. Delicious peppers, garlic, and onions from the garden. And now you have a way of stretching into a lot more different recipes. So thanks so much for stopping by. We sure appreciate you uh, checking out our channel. Subscribe. We appreciate you subscribing. So when you subscribe, if you hit the notification bell, you get a chance to see all the latest videos uh, when they're uploaded. And uh, so hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much. God bless. And we'll see you soon.